Hi guys and welcome to the video on solving equations. Oh, forgot this. Solving equations by clearing fractions. Okay, so we've been solving equations all the last this week and last week. So now we're going to talk about something different. Um, if you notice, I have this three in my denominator here, and right away I know you guys are kind of freaking out and wondering what am I supposed to do with that. So what we're going to do is that when you have a fraction, you're Anywhere in your um, in your equation, you're going to ask yourself, what is my greatest common, I'm sorry, least common denominator of those fractions? And obviously, we've only got one denominator, which is 3. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to multiply this side of my equation by 3 over 1. Because what's going to happen? That means that this 3 is going to cancel out and change to 1, and this 3 is going to cancel out and change to 1. So remember, if I multiply that side by 3, I have to multiply this side by 3. So now this becomes x equals 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 4 is positive 12. Okay, so now all I did is I took this weird looking equation with a fraction and changed it into a regular two step equation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away my 3x from this side. Oops and my 3x from that side. That leaves me with negative 2x equals 12. And I'm going to divide by negative 2. And that gives me these cancel out for 1. And then x is going to be 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. So that's our answer for this one. Okay, and you know, this might be a little bit confusing, so I just want you to follow along, um, follow the examples, write what I write, try to get what you can out of it, and then of course when you come to class um, the next day, then we'll answer any questions that you have. So I just kind of want you to hang with me for a second, okay? All right, here's another one. Now, what I would suggest that you do is if you can combine anything easily, right, at this point I see that we can combine this negative 3 and this uh, negative 2. So now you just need to decide what am I going to do with it. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's add 3 here and add 3 there. Let's get rid of that first. So now that leaves me with m equals 4 fifths m and then negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. Okay, now remember what I said um, on the last slide. So you're going to look through and you're going to find out what is my common denominator of all these fractions. And I only have 1, which is 5. So that means I'm going to multiply each side by 5. So I'm going to multiply this side by 5, and I'm going to multiply this side by 5. So when I multiply 5 times n, I get 5n. Okay? And on here, I'm going to go ahead and write it out. This gives me 5 times 1 times 4 fifths m, that's this part right here, and then plus 5 times 1, which is just 5. So if you notice, look what happens here. These 5s cancel each other out to get you 1, and you're left with 5m equals 4m plus 5. Okay? Then from here, you know that you can subtract 4m on this side, subtract 4m on that side. I'm going to go ahead and continue writing over here. 5m minus 4m is m. These cancel out to give you 0, and now I am just left with 5. Okay? All right, let's go on to one more. Now this one has two fractions in it. Okay, the other ones, when you go back, right, this one just had one fraction here, all right? So here we've got two. So same thing, I want you guys to go ahead and get rid of any numbers that we can get rid of. So let's do plus four over here and plus four over here. That's just gonna get rid of those constants. So x over five, that becomes zero. Then 2 plus 4 is 6. Then we're going to subtract 2x over 5. Okay, so now we're going to look at it, and which is our common denominator? We have a common denominator here of 5 and another one of 5, so obviously that's our common denominator. They're the same. 
So that means that I'm going to multiply this side by 5, and I'm going to multiply this side by 5. Okay, when I do 5 over 1 times x over 5, these 5s cancel to give me 1, and I'm left with x. Okay, over here, I get 5 times 6, which is 30, and then I get negative 2x over 5 times 5 over 1. Okay, I'm doing this portion of it. So what happens to these 5s? They cancel each other out, and you're left with 1. So now you have x equals 30 minus 2x. Okay? I'm going to run out of room here. So I'm going to rewrite it here. x equals 30 minus 2x. Okay, so now we go on to our variable on both side equations. So I'm going to add 2x here. I'm going to add 2x there, and I end up with 3x equals 30, Then I divide each side by 3, and x is equal to 10. Okay, so this is the solution to that problem. Remember, you want to go through and you want to plug in that 10 to make sure that it works. Okay, so the first three examples that we did had the same denominator. So this next one or two are a little bit different. If you notice, we've got a denominator of 4 and a denominator of 8. So that means you need to find out what is the, great, the least common multiple of those two numbers. And of course, it's 8. So that means that we are going to, first of all, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this constant. Let's do that first. All right, we're just kind of making it simpler. So 3y divided by 4, that gives you 0 equals y over 8, and then 4 plus 6 is 10. Okay, so now we're going to divide each side by 8. I'm going to divide both by this side by 8. Okay, so if you look over here, remember 4 and 8 share a factor of 4. So 4 goes into 4 one time, 4 goes into 8 two times, and then 2 times 3y is 6y. Okay, then over here, if you look, I'm going to use, remember these two are being multiplied by each other. So my 8 and my 8 cancel out to give me 1, right? So then I'm just left with y all by itself. Okay, so that's just going to be y plus and then 10 times 8 is 80. Okay, so now we're going to go and go back to our two our variables on each side. Minus y here, minus y there. That gives me 5y equals 80. And I divide each side by 5. And that means that y is equal to 16. Okay, now I know some of these might be seem like they're going pretty fast, but again, like I said, follow along, write them down, try to go through the steps with me. It's kind of hard to do this, um, you know, just on the screen without actually seeing you, so in class we'll go over it a little bit more. Okay, I think we have two more. Okay, so in this one, we have all these p's. We've got p minus p divided by 6 equals p divided by 3 plus 2, so there's nothing to move around. But you need to look at it and tell, ask yourself, what are my common denominators? I have a denominator of 6, and I have a denominator of 3. So if you found the common denominator of those two, it would be 6. So that means we're going to take this side, and we're going to multiply it by 6. And remember, if I do that to this side, I have to do it to this side also. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm taking the quantity on the left and multiplying it by 6, and the quantity on the right and multiplying it by 6. Okay. So 6 times p is going to give me 6p, okay? Now if I do 6 times p over 6, these 6s are going to cancel each other out, and all I'm left with is my negative p, okay? And then here, when I multiply 6 times p over 3, 
my 3 and my 6 cancel out. And all I'm left with is 2p. And then 2 times 6 is 12. Okay. So now I'm going to combine like terms. 6p minus p gives me 5p. And I can't do anything with my 2p plus 12. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 2p here and subtract 2p there. That gives me 3p equals, that becomes 0, 12. Divide this side by 3, this side by 3, and p is equal to 4. Okay? So really, all we're doing is we're just going through and getting rid of those fractions. Because yes, you could work with them as fractions, but even though this might seem a little bit complicated, it actually makes things a lot easier. Okay, last one. All right, here we go. We have got four different fractions. We've got a denominator of 20, a denominator of 10, a denominator of 4, and a denominator of 5. Okay, now you could go through and you could change each one of those into a denominator of 20 and solve it that way, okay? But this way is actually easier, okay? So our, we know our denominator, our common denominator is 20, so we're going to multiply this side by 20, and we're going to multiply this side by 20. Okay, so as long as I'm doing the same thing to both sides, right? So I've got my 20s here, I'm doing multiplying by 20, multiplying by 20 on both sides. That's going to keep it equivalent. Okay, oops, lost my one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one kind of more step by step. So if I multiply 20 times 3x, that gives me 60x over 20. Okay, because 20 times 3 is 60 and 1 times 20 is 20. And then 20 over 1 times 1 over 10 is 20 over 10. Okay. And then over here, if I multiply x over 4 multiplied by 20 over 1, that is 20x over 4 minus 1 fifth times 20 over 1 is 20 over 5. Okay. So all I did is I multiplied this times this and then this times this, this times this, and this times this. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to simplify. 20 divided by 60 is 3, right? So these cancel to give me 3. So it would be 3x. 20 divided by 10 is 2. Okay, 20 divided by 4 is 5x. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. Okay, so all I did is I got rid of all of these denominators and made it into whole numbers. So now I'm going to go through and I am going to subtract 3x here, subtract 3x there. Okay, this gives me 0, 2 equals 2x minus 4. And now I'm going to add 4, add 4. And I get 6 equals 2x, divide each side by 2, and x is equal to 3. Okay, so I know this was a lot of information. Again, I just want you to go through and copy down what I did. And if you have, you know, having a problem with it, just go through and look at it. See if you can follow the steps. If not, when you come into class tomorrow, we will go over everything again step by step. So you just kind of have a little bit of knowledge, and then we'll tackle it in class. All right, guys, we'll have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.